So welcome if there's anyone here I have not met before. I'm Madalena and I'm the DBE uh, program chief for WISDOT. Um, I want to make sure that you meet Brian Porter, who is the new uh, uh, consultant services chief in BPD, the Bureau of Project Development. Uh, I saw you on the call, I think, Brian. I yeah, do see good you. morning, okay. Madalena. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Good, thank you. Good. Anything you'd like to share? Maybe um, tell this group a little bit about yourself. I'm not sure how many you've met already of those here. Yeah, yeah. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, Brian Porter, the Consultant Services Section Chief in Wistot's Bureau of Project Development. Um, just a, a little background on me. I, I worked for a consulting firm in the Madison area for almost 10 years, um, have been with WISDOT now for, for over nine years. I worked in traffic operations, uh, and then in planning, and, and now in project development. Um, and I think most of you know, but my, my group manages the solicitation process, uh, masterworks, uh, cars, and uh, WISDOT's consultant budget. So uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions on those items, and I'll try to find an answer for you. I, Look forward to working with you all. Thanks, Brian. We are happy that you are on board. And um, and I know I'll be bringing many questions your way. Uh, so looking forward to that collaboration. Thank you. Um, and I see Dave Burles is on. So hi, Dave. Nice to see you. Thanks, Madeline. Nice to see everyone. Um, I'll go down this list here as I see it showing up. Um, who is on the phone at 414? 414736 is the number. Okay, we can't hear you, so we'll have a mystery guest. Uh, Bruce is here. Good morning, Bruce Spam. Yes, good morning, Madeleine and everyone. Christina Crane is also here from M Squared. Hello, Christina. Hello, good morning. Morning. And Ilya Yaz, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Madalena. Our pleasure. Um, Jesse Friend is here. I'm not sure if you all have met him. Jesse is new to aeronautics, um, newish, I guess. Now you're you're uh, ingrained, Jesse. But you're working in the compliance area for aeronautics. Is that right? Uh, I, yeah, compliance and and helping Shannon out with uh, with DBE stuff for uh, airport projects. Perfect. Welcome to Transcac. Yeah, Michael hi, Volker. Everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Here. Uh, Kathleen, of course, you see her on the screen. Good morning, Kathleen. Thank you for organizing. Yep. Good morning, everyone. Mitch Patoka is here from Consultant Services as well. Good morning, Mitch. Morning. Good morning, Randy Crump from Prism. Hello. Hi there. Rosalind Ro Roberson is here from the DBE team in Support Services. Good morning, Good morning, Roz. Good morning. Um, and SL Hendricks Williams is here. Um, I am not sure that we have met you yet. Hello. Hello. Hi. Actually, it's Reeves now. I recently was married. I'm from MKE Tippers, one of the DBEs in Wisconsin. Oh, okay. Well, welcome. <laughs> We're happy to have you here. Um, and Kathleen, did you get the uh, get her name and where she, will you say that again for us so we make sure to um, get your your name and company listed in the notes properly? Yes, my name is Shondalyn, S-H-A-N-D-O-W-L-Y-O-N, Reeves, R-E-A-V-E-S. My husband Elijah is also here, E-L-I-J-A-H Reeves, and we're from M. K E Tippers T I P P E R S L L C. We're a dump truck business and we're a uh, DBE. Okay, great. Um, and so you know, um, we have also uh, an advisory committee that focuses on uh, contracting in construction heavy highway. This meeting will focus more so on consulting. So if you're wondering. Um, why are we only talking about consulting in here or leaning towards that? That's why. Um, and there is another meeting where we'll focus more on construction, just so you know that there's that other option too. 
thanks for joining okay. us today. Thank you. Okay, and I saw Minal. Minal Ham is here also from M Squared. Good morning, Minal. Good morning. How are you? Good, thanks. Nice to see you again. Likewise. Um, Mike Rivera's here. Good morning. Good morning. Um, and I'm looking quick to see if there's anyone else. That phone number is gone now, so I guess so maybe we scared them off. Okay, so let's get going here with um, a review of the minutes, please, from Kathleen. Yes. Um, okay, just one moment. Okay, so uh, this is a review of the minutes from the July 27, 2022 meeting. And um, we uh, had a welcome from Madalena. We had a review of the minutes um, from April 27, 2022. And then uh, Mitch Patoka uh, presented on, pre on behalf of Consultant Services. Um, currently, at that point, the DBE achievement which was executed was at 20, almost 21%, 20.90%, and that was through uh, June 30th, 2022. Uh, consultant services did not expect to set any more DBE goals because of the strong neutral participation. He highlighted uh, the construction fair that was coming up on September 13th, 2022, uh, highlighted the interactive map of all the inter uh, anticipated projects, and then also spoke about uh, the August 2022 solicitations coming up. Um, Madalena then presented the DBE program update report. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, she highlighted the figures that were uh, for construction that were through July 2022 and consulting through July, excuse me, through June 2022. Um, we are in the second year of our third year goal. And at that point, um, are the current DB achievement between construction and consultant um, was at 12.52%. Our overall goal uh, from FHWA is 12.41%. So we were at a point that we were exceeding that, which was good. Um, Madalena also highlighted the small purchase contracts. Uh, DB, the DBE office is working on a pilot with the Southeast region to identify projects uh, for uh, for the small purchase contracts that will be available through mentor protege pairs. And uh, we're expecting the first SPC in the Southeast region um, in August 2022. Um, also working on networking events. Uh, Kim Lobdell would be assisting Madalena with these events and looking at an event for the prime or for the consultants in uh, fall 2022. Um, Becky Soderholm also presented a transit update. Um, she presented an overview of the transit program. Uh, she indicated that Wistat is a pass-through agency for the rural sub-recipients in cities. Other larger cities apply directly to FTA. Um, the current goal is at 1.85%, and that is uh, set to expire um, in June, or ex excuse me, September 2022. Um, she discussed the methodology for ex uh, establishing the new three-year goal. Uh, her draft goal at that point was 1.61% of race neutral and with a comment period closing uh, July 13, 2022. Uh, Becky really encouraged all DBE, cons all DBE consultants to consider transit consulting opportunities when looking to engage with WISTOP for work. And uh, Becky is certainly available to answer any questions if you, if any consultants want, have any questions um, regarding this type of opportunity. Uh, I then presented um, consultant cuff monitoring. Um, I am the, co the coordinator for the consultant cuff monitoring. Uh, CUF stands for commercial, commercially useful function, and um, this is a compliance piece with the federal regulation. Um, we were doing it for, uh, for construction, and we also needed to incorporate our consultants with this. Um, so uh, consultants would be contacted um, late August, September, as some of you uh, have been contacted already by regions and bureaus. And um, we did have an information session in August for the WISDOT staff who would be contacting the consultants. And um, we are monitoring the DB firms only with uh, uh, those firms that have federal funds. 
And then lastly, uh, we had some industry issue, uh, the industry check-in and announcements. Um, Kim Lubdell uh, suggested at the ACEC quarterly meetings to keep a standing DBE agenda item for the afternoon meetings um, that affect only the consultant industry. And um, at the August meeting, ACEC members will be reminded um, that these meetings are now posted on YouTube. So again, if anybody has any questions or want to, wants to review any content, uh, just know that all these uh, meetings are recorded and on YouTube. And um, we also discussed uh, le the legislative updates to the new federal DBE program. There was an open comment period. Um, and then also brought up uh, the annual DBE workshop and networking event um, that is going to be held next year in 2023, March 2nd, March 3rd, was at the Wisconsin Dells, and certainly more information will follow. Um, and then Scott uh, had some closing comments and meeting was adjourned. Great. Thank you very much, Kathleen. Do we have any suggested edits to those notes? Not seeing any hands up, so um, we will move them along. Do we have a motion to approve those minutes? Motion to approve, Adelina. Thanks, Dave. Uh, do we have a second? I, can I second? I mean, I'll, I'll why don't I second? Am I allowed to do that? <laughs> I think so. Okay, then it'll I'll be me. <laughs> All right. Everybody second, so I think we're good. Okay. Um, I want to note that Keisha Sutton is on the phone now from Prism. Welcome, Keisha. Um, there is Natalia Vega from my team. Hello, Natalia. And also Scott Lauer has joined us. Good morning. Okay. So consultant services updates, Brian Porter. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Thank you. Right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share a couple of slides. Let me know when you guys are able to see these. I see it. All right. Excellent. So first, I wanted to share some overall results from our federal fiscal year 22 DBE report. Um, this table shows executed DBE consulting contracts. So overall, we had almost 138 million in federal funds. Um, our overall DBE goal was 12.41%, which amounts to just over $17 million. And our actual DBE achievement was 21.08%, which amounts to just over 29 million. So some positive results for federal fiscal 22. And I think Madalena's going to get into some of the details there, so I won't go into anything more on that. Uh, next, I wanted to talk about our construction fair. Uh, we held that virtually again this year, which seems to help uh, minimize time away from a busy month for construction projects. Um, we held 63 interviews throughout the day and selected uh, 61 prime consultants and 226 project leaders for 283 packages that uh, contain 343 projects. So a um, lot going on there. And, and these contracts are estimated at around $60 million. Um, and just to note, these numbers don't include the mega major construction oversight contracts we solicited earlier this year. And we may have a few projects uh, come in and out of the program throughout the next couple of months that would be shown in a addenda. So we had a busy month with that. Uh, thanks to many of you for participating in the fair. I know it's a big effort for uh, consultants and WSDOT, so thanks. Uh, here's a chart showing how those 343 projects were spread out um throughout the regions and a comparison to last year to to give you some perspective uh, again this doesn't include the mega major construction projects in the southeast region or any addenda that would come out afterwards
Um, lastly, I wanted to give you a heads up on our next event, Engineering Opportunity Day. Uh, we're planning an in-person event in the Madison area during one of the last two weeks of February. Uh, we're still working on the venue and the exact date, uh, but we should have those nailed down in the next few weeks. So that's all I have. I appreciate your time and I'll pass it back to, uh, to Kathleen or Madalena. Thank you, Brian. Does anyone have any questions for Brian? Not seeing any hands. Um, we can, uh, in our next meeting, uh, so four months out, is that January? Um, at our next meeting, which will be the, the beginning of um, the new year for us, but we already will have been in our federal fiscal year for a bit. We're in um, we're in 2023 right now. October entered federal fiscal year 23, so we'll be able to give you the final um, final final numbers that we had and share some demographic information with you um, for FFY 2022, and then we'll be able to give you an update on where we're at and how 2023 is um, looking, having been a few months in at that point. So. Um, Make sure you stay in touch with um, Brian's team if you have more questions about solicitation opportunities, um, what's on the horizon. We're always sending out an e-blast each month that also includes um, how to get to solicitation information, notice information. Um, that website for consultant services also will give you links to get to uh, information on doing the CFR, which is everybody's favorite thing. Um, consult financial report, right? And um, Brian and his team are also happy to help you with that, right? Okay, thanks very much. Um, and we can move into DB program updates. <clears throat> so I will share my screen, which means I can't see any of you. So Kathleen, please tell me if you see any hands or there are questions. Um, yes, I will. Okay. So little bit, little snapshot of where we are in our overall. We know that we will um, achieve our overall annual DB goal, which is 12.41%. Um, I see from Brian's presentation that we actually have some more consulting dollars, so we'll put those in there. That'll raise our, uh, our federal dollars in also a bit, but um, we're still going to be at this goal. We're at 12.54 now, so we're not going to backslide. We do have... Uh, 21 million in additional construction commitments that uh, have been approved at this point. And we've also taken into account the modifications that would have involved a reduction. So at this point, we are confident to say we've got, we've achieved our overall goal. And now it's, it's just going to come down to how much. Um, and Maria Rojas, our utilization engineer and her team are working tirelessly to uh, move those commitments through. I think they've processed over 1300 so far for um, for this federal fiscal year for 22. So um, so we're looking good and um, strong numbers here overall um, prior to having all of those commitments processed and um, the update for consultant services. Um, we were at 130 million in uh, DB commitments. So that's a strong, strong amount. Uh, we'll give you updates and finalize those. We present our uniform report to Federal Highways December 1st. And at that point, our numbers are locked in. So any any reports we give you after December will be what we reported to um, FHWA. Okay, so the main thing that I wanted to really be focusing on was giving you some updates on these strategies that we um, have been sharing with you uh, throughout the past year, where are we at with what we talked about already and um, and where are we going and what have we added? So a few things that I'm going to talk about are the outreach to DBE firms, the phone calls that we were making related to if they're interested in WISDOT work, um, successes, challenges, working with WISDOT, if we could identify some of those barriers um, that DBE firms might be experiencing. Um, we were looking to increase support to DBE firms through coaching, we were bringing the mobilization loan program back online, which offers a guarantee of loans. Uh, we don't give the loan, but we can guarantee a loan for uh, firms that have a contract with WISDOT. So um, lots of details on how to do that, but 
that is now available and being accessed. Um, we did, uh, we were looking, I think at the time we originally reported it, making website updates, trying to get tools out there so that DBEs uh, would understand what we can do to help. And um, also anyone else, you know, sometimes you're subbing to a DBE who doesn't prime as a prime. Um, these are good resources to share um, so that you can help those DBEs grow as well. And then um, looking into expansion and recruitment, how can we help our existing firms expand their existing work areas that they can receive credit for and um, address maybe some of their issues with um, labor, right? We know that's a big one. Um, they could potentially take on more work if they can identify labor. Can we help them in some way? Um, and also recruiting new firms, particularly in the northern regions. Um, this is more in, on the construction side that we, um, you know, we've got to recruit in the northern regions. But um, overall, we want to make sure that uh, that we're putting that call out and um, and letting firms who uh, who are eligible know because we've got a lot of opportunities coming. So in the phone reach outreach updates, um, what have we done? Well, we made about um, 600 calls. The DBE um, team did this and um, and sort of tried to figure out, it's been explained to me sometimes that some phone calls were like, hey, it's great to hear from you. It's been years, right? Haven't, haven't received a phone call from the DBE office. Some were um, surprised that, that we cared. Um, some, of the sessions turned into something like therapy. Um, but overall, I think it was, um, the firms were happy that we did reach out to them and were candid with us expressing things like the um, the difficulties navigating um, bidding process. Um, some were interested in learning how to submit a successful NOI or quote, right? They've been um, putting in uh, responses to solicitations or quoting, um, don't hear anything. Um, Lack of goal on consultant contracts was brought up. Um, gaining and maintaining a standing in the road construction industry was important. Uh, you know, how do you break in and then um, maintain those relationships? Some noted a lack of opportunities for smaller small businesses. So the smallest of the small um, often have the hardest time um, getting into the industry. Staffing shortages, of course, is affecting everyone. A significant increase in requests for quotes was noted as a positive uh, from DBEs um, that is in general on the um, construction side, but we do see um, steady use of uh, DBE firms in consulting. Um, and still as some of those um, bigger firms had moved out of um, DBE eligibility for consulting, um, still had very strong uh, DBE achievement. So that's positive. Um, 11 firms had requested meeting invites as a result of these calls um, to participate in stakeholder meetings. And I think that number actually might be higher um, since I had first looked at the outreach report because I know that um, we've had quite a few new faces in these meetings, so that's been great. Um, learning about DB support services was helpful to them. Finding enough work um, on county and municipal projects was a, a reason given for why they might not be working on state work. Um, and in general, just expressed appreciation for the personal nature of these calls. So what we will continue to do is reach out um, to our firms periodically, checking in, finding out, um, are you interested in WIS.org now? What can we do to support you, et cetera? Um, so that's an update there. An update related to increased support in general to DBE firms. Um, in coaching, we have two construction firms um, engaged right now and one consulting firm. And if you ask, what is coaching? This is um, a program that we formed to address needs of DBE firms that might be sort of outside the box. Um, we can't quite address it through saying, um, let's help you immediately get in touch with a prime who can um, help you with the issue you're having or help you make introductions. Um, for instance, we had janitorial firm, um, not quite sure how they would immediately get in now through a result of um, coaching, have identified that they could um, potentially set up construction site trailers and that that's a viable option for them and is also creditable as it's um, usually a bid item. 
um, a consulting firm that is um, in a type of planning that is kind of outside of what we contract for, um, but we could get creative with them. So that's those are a couple of the options in coaching. We've also looked at uh, working with firms to help them get an expansion to their existing NAICS codes. So we have a firm that's working um, with a prime uh, to get an expansion to be able to uh, install Beam Guard. Um, so there could be other things like that in consulting where you're not quite ready maybe to go full mentor protege, but there's an aspect within um, the consulting world, maybe it's part of design that you want some assistance on as DBE um, to grow and um, be able to be competitive in that item. So um, working on coaching and um, and really, this is a resource that we'll use quite a bit as um, new firms are certified and looking at where we can plug them into our resources right away. Um, so coaching is that one of those. Uh, mobilization loan, which I had mentioned, described a little bit. We have one firm, I think has three guarantees. Um, is that right, Roz? Um, that's three or is it two and one in process? Or oh, my... That's three. three. Okay. Good. And then one firm um, is in process. So if you have questions about mobilization loan program, please do follow up with Rosalind. Um, also on the website, um, which I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I can go here. I didn't test this. Okay. Fabulous. So, um, so here is the DB support services website. I can't recall if I showed this to all of you, but we might have some different people on the call anyway this time. So just to make sure you know, DB Support Services does have this page now, and these are clickable. So you can go into each of these, see the types of um, resources that, um, that we're offering, um, business growth and development. Each of these is also clickable, gives you more information. I mentioned loan mobilization. There's resources there and the um, brochure, mentor protege has got a brochure, capacity building, business assessment is um, a form you would fill out to get our services. So check these out. Um, okay, I'm happy that worked. Um, and then <clears throat> I also, oops, I wanted to mention that um, we have provided scholarships to scale up Milwaukee um, to their SPARK program, which um, this is the brochure for that. And so this cohort um, helps build um, small businesses. We are we have offered scholarships to five of our firms to this um, particular class. We'll continue doing that. And then they do also have um, another program that will add um, in the summer of next year. And um, those are sort of business incubators that are really meant to help your business take off. Um, so couple updates there and those are those scholarships are open to um, construction and consulting firms because these are really business building opportunities so it's not specific to the type of work you do um okay since i can't see anyone i'm assuming there's no uh questions but any questions nobody hmm. has their hand raised so no okay no thanks at this point. I um, want to give you all opportunities. OK, some opportunities or some updates in um, strategies for diversity and consultant contracting. So uh, you heard, um, will you, Kathleen, can you mute whoever we hear talking? Um, so Kathleen had mentioned in the notes that um, there we were looking at the small purchase contracts for Southeast region, and we still are. And we did not get that done in August because we do not have three confirmed mentor protege pairs yet. Therefore, we can't actually um, do the small purchase contract to the mentor protege firm. So we are working on that. We have two uh, firms in consulting who are already in mentor protege. We have two more uh, that are hopefully Madalena, you just want to somebody who you, you got muted. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. OK, can you hear <laughs> yeah, me now? Now you're, now you're good. OK. Um. So did you hear me say anything about consultant contracts? 
Did you hear any about this? We, we Some, but not. Small purchase purchase. Contract. You just got started on the small purchase, so maybe step back. Okay, thanks. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so in um, consultant contracts, uh, we do still have a plan to work with the Southeast region. It didn't happen by the end of August because we don't have three firms yet, mentor protege in consultant. We have two, we're working on two more. Um, however, we also need to have firms that want to work on um, design, right? So if we have three firms that are all in construction management, well, that might not work. Um, so it's, it's a little more complicated than we thought here about let's offer small purchase contracts to mentor protege pairs. Uh, we haven't given up on it, but that's the reason why um, we have a hold. Um, we are looking at other ways, though, uh, with the Southeast region to potentially encourage that uh, new DBEs get used on projects, um, could be through master contracts, and um, could a uh, prime use their master contracts um, for one of the work orders to bring in a DBE from. So we're looking at a variety of possibilities. We did have um, not a man master contract, but a contract where um, Southeast region had some room in the project funding to cover expenses of the mentor so that they could provide um, a lot of needed support uh, to the DBE protege in that project. So that type of option is one that we want to pursue more as well. Um, so that's still in process. We'll give you updates as we go. Um, we had also mentioned increasing diversity on selection panels, and that's possible in some regions and not in others because the region itself um, may not have the type of diversity um, we aim for overall um, through WSDOT, um, but that could be due to many reasons, one being just geographical location. Um, so we want to do that, though, as much as possible. And we're also considering... Uh, the possibilities for inclusive solicitation language that may have uh, more of an emphasis on, um, you know, who you, how are you making um, the selections for who you are going to put into your response. Um, so update there. The update on um, talking with DB primes uh, or with uh, consulting primes about including DBs um, did happen. Uh, we engaged a, a group of primes, um, ACEC supported this, as well as um, our leadership here at DTSD, and uh, we engaged in a conversation uh, in which, you know, we just really sort of put out there that while we meet the goals of um, the DBE program in spirit, we, are, we aren't meeting that um, in contracting opportunities that include groups that have been historically shut out of heavy highway in the way we want to. So um, we're seeing that um, that we've got growth there, but we want to we are cognizant of the need um, to be making sure these opportunities are available and being taken advantage of by other groups. Um, so we know also industry stronger when we have more qualified firms and businesses are stronger when they're more diverse and also in a practical um, from a practical perspective, project level goals are a potential in the next year. So it's good for primes to be preparing for that also by working with more firms now. And uh, we had a really great conversation. And um, so this is some of the feedback I wanted to share with you uh, that we had received. And then I'm hoping that this group also may have additional um, feedback. And we do intend to you know, take this to heart and put as much as we can into practice. So um, allocating funds to cover mentor costs on projects. I sort of mentioned how that had went really well on one of our projects with Mentor Protege. We'll look at that and um, the, the mentor can then support the DB who is a lead on the project. Making sure primes know who's available. This is really, I think, a charge to us in um, OBOC to be making sure that we have good methods for getting um, the word out. Who are our new DBs? Um, how can you contact them? We've got our really great quarterly um, DBE alert 
newsletter, um, but we also want to make sure that that's getting to everyone. We send out monthly updates of um, new DBs, but who's getting that information? So we're really looking at all of our communication tools, making sure that our website is also updated regularly so that information is there. Um, ACAC mentioned and Dave offered for sure to uh, welcome DBEs to ACEC quarterly meetings uh, and uh, they can introduce themselves there. It's a good way to start networking. We can create one page uh, capability business overviews, helping our firms to do that. We already offer this, but making sure that our firms are aware of it, take advantage of it. Um, this is important, especially for new firms trying to introduce themselves. Um, then some other suggestions could WSDOT request that primes use a portion of their master contracts to include DBs. I don't know. Um, I suppose we can request it. I don't know that we can require it, but this is a viable approach. It was also um, suggested. Yes. Oh, Madalena, I, I don't want to interrupt, but Dave does have a question. Dave. Um, yes, please. We're well, just kind of an add as you talk about making sure primes know who is available. A comment I heard after that meeting. Somebody said, um, can we revise the roster that's out there? Right now, the DBs are, it's all alphabetical. And so it's like they're asterisk on them. Can we maybe put them on top or in the bot, a, a separate DB section and a little bit more information about what they can provide? So as primes are looking, it's a little bit easier to identify the DB firms. So that was a comment that somebody had made after the meeting. Thanks, Dave. Um, I, we've got a meeting coming up next week or soonish um, with Brian Porter's team. So that is something we can talk about. Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to note uh, just also so we know uh, the as the regulation that guides the DBE program, uh, the federal regulation um, changes, there will likely be some updates uh, to the overall directory and the information that we put out there for DBE. So I think as we see those changes in the coming years, we will also have um, really great comprehensive information out there. In the meantime, we can be preparing for that and, uh, and maybe we can look at that roster um, also as a way <clears throat> to highlight some more information. So I will, I've got the note there to bring this up in our, in our meeting. Thanks, Dave. Um, where are we at? Golden shovels. So could we focus some more on consultant primes there? Yes, absolutely. Let's do that. Um, and making DB inclusion part of the selection process, that is a conversation we will also have. A uh, suggestion to have the selection process require a DBE be part of the project from beginning to end. So scope through letting, you need to include a DBE. I'm not sure how we would do that, but again, we're trying to just think of all the ideas that um, could be of use to us here, whether or not they're immediately feasible, and then dig into them deeper to see what can be done, what can't be done. We know that we can't have um, any uh, money that particularly we say this is DBE only, but do we have some room around that um, that we can have, you know, DBEs encouraged, small businesses encouraged? Absolutely. Um, so DBEs could shadow a prime on certain tasks like utility coordination. I'm sure you all can think of some others where um, that would be a great opportunity as well, shadowing. Um, it was noted that um, using subs now is a really great idea because uh, firms are short staffed. So you could consider using the sub as an extension of your own staff, train them the way you want them to uh, be performing. And then they're, they're there for you when, you're, um, when you don't have the staff you need. Uh, in bold here, short staffed, it's just industry wide. Um, maybe it's nationwide. I mean, my restaurants here in town closed down three days a week because they can't find anybody to work. So I think it's all of us right now. Uh, DBs have issues with overhead rates, completing CFRs, understanding how to use masterworks. Uh, this is already on Brian and Michael's radar um, as we've talked about it and it'll come up in our uh, upcoming meeting too. Um, we also are adding some support for CFR compilation through our uh, partnership with Small Business Development Center. Um, we hope that they're going to be able to, to assist 
DBs and compiling those CFRs as they're able to put together very complex financial statements for small firms to take to banks. We think this could be a good opportunity as well for them to help us. Uh, so increasing face-to-face -face networking opportunities, that is a suggestion and that's what we're doing. Sort of the basis of having that meeting with primes was the next step then. How do we organize these networking opportunities? We wanna have them in multiple locations in the state. Uh, we wanna offer training sessions for submitting successful NOIs. I don't know that we've done that in our workshops, our annual workshop. That would be uh, a great way to sort of highlight, here's a successful way to um, get yourself noticed. Offering services that spotlight DBEs and their capabilities. Uh, we will look into this more and how we can reach wider audiences as well. Uh, and then there was a suggestion for WISDOT to be working more with the DBs to understand where they want to grow. And so uh, how can we help our consultant firms to not only um, get work in the areas they are uh, currently thriving in, but where do they envision themselves being down the road? And how can we then enlist our primes to help support those efforts and workforce development? does need to be a key focus. We had received um, some email follow-up afterwards um, in which um, I think it was Andy from HNTB who had brought up the possibility of um, engaging more in, uh, in some of our programs that go into schools. We're gonna be bringing on, or maybe it just started this fall, with uh, Milwaukee Public Schools, we're working on a program with Ashto that helps develop stem cell or STEM um, science uh, areas. I've mentioned this before uh, in terms of their projects that they have some modules that focus on civil engineering. So we're doing that. And um, so there are primes interested in supporting that and having further conversation about how we can really focus on that that workforce piece. So let us know if your firm wants to be engaged in that too, because we know that's important. And finally, uh, mentioning that uh, the save the date is out there in November, I believe we will have registration open. So this is a change of venue to the Wilderness Resort in the Dells. Um, it's Glacier Canyon um, Conference Center, and we will have more, more information coming. Check out the agenda, though, because that is a change. Um, we're going to be doing the workshops and um, the award presentations on day one, lunch, day one, networking reception that night. The next day, we'll have a breakfast power hour, go directly into networking, and then we're done for the day. So just be checking that and paying attention as you go along so you know how that, that shift works and you don't miss anything. Uh, okay, well, thank you. I hope that you are all still with me. I know that was a lot of talking. Um, I'm going to look through here quick to see if we have any additional people. I am not seeing anybody. Oh, yes, I am. Benji. All right. Benji had to do an orientation because you know why. Benji Hayek is our new program engineer for the DBE program. And so I'm very happy to introduce her to you in that capacity. Many of you do know Benji already from all her work with WISDOT over the years and work with uh, OBAC um, in particular, uh, but she is now our program engineer. So Benji, welcome. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Yes, I'm very excited to be working with you guys in this capacity, and I look forward to all the new things that I'm going to be doing with you guys. Wonderful. Well, welcome. Um, Benji will, you'll, you'll be hearing Benji's voice in addition to mine um, as we move forward because she will be giving updates on uh, DB attainment amongst other things and um, is already a resource for you. So if you have um, questions about what's going on um, in DB attainment uh, consultant 
or construction, you've got uh, Maria and Benji as resources now. So thank you and welcome. Still not seeing any hands. Um, oh, but I do see Jada Bigham joined us from FHWA. Welcome, Jada. Hi, can you hear me? Hi there. Um, okay, yeah. Rosalind, I see your hand is up. Yes, I just want to remind everyone that we are accepting nominations for our Golden Secretary's Golden Shovel Awards. So if you didn't receive your uh, your information, we posted it on the website. So you can go to the website, to our annual event website. is posted there for the form. Uh, we also want to open up uh, early bird registration opens for the annual event on November 28th. So we encourage you to get your hotel, get your hotel room now and uh, uh, be ready to uh, uh, register. Early bird is only $99. Yes. And I think it's a pretty nice discount for staying in the Dells too. So just ask for our block because you'll get that roommate. Okay. Kathleen, are you ready to talk about cuff? Oh, wait, Keisha. Hang on one sec. Keisha, yes. Hi, everybody. Happy hump day. Um, and I was going to, we are me actually meeting today with David Hunt and Don um, to talk about the marketing for uh, Golden Show, or sorry, DVE Summit. <laughs> sure. It's okay. Great. I'm glad to, to know that's moving along. Um, we have teamed up with Wisconsin Tourism to help us this year. So hopefully that is fruitful. And that allows Roz to be concentrating on all these support services um, that we've been relaying to you. Um, so thank you. And I see Meenal's hand is up. Uh, good morning. So I just wanted to maybe push to coordinate with the Transportation Improvement Conference with ACEC. Um, that is occurring March 7th and 8th, I believe. Dave, maybe you can confirm. Um, it just, and they're in the Dells as well. It just seems, I don't know, maybe to get the same corner of the industry there back to back. It's too bad they weren't like aligned a little bit more. So either they were at the same venue and one rolled into the other or something to that effect. So just a comment. Okay, thanks, Mino. I see Scott yeah. is on screen. So did you want to speak yeah, to I was, that? Yeah, I was actually thinking the same thing, Mino. When I <clears throat> seen the date of March 2nd, 3rd, I was like, geez, that, that's right around the improvement conference. I wonder if it's the same date or not. And that's a week off. So yeah, maybe, you know, maybe not for this year, but if we continue to have this event in the in the Dells area, if there's ways to um, link these two up, because we will have a lot of people at both of these. Right. Um, yeah, that's that is an interesting. And it, actually, it might bring some greater awareness to some of our folks that don't go to the DB event that maybe they should. Yeah, you know, that's a good idea also because I don't think we have any presence at that transportation conference and, you know, at DBE in general. Did you want to add to that, Dave? No, I agree with Scott's comments and I, you know, ACEC, we'd be happy to work on coordinating, you know, is there an overlap day or something like that, that um, since if we are going to be in the same location, I think Mino's comments are spot on and Scott agrees. So. They're at the same venue, aren't they, Dave? The Wilderness? Isn't it both at the wilderness? No, they're at Great, no. Great Canyon, Grace. Correct. Yeah, the, right. it's a different one, I believe. Yeah. It oh. is the seventh and eighth, but it, it is. In the Dells. So yeah. you're not at wilderness? Yeah. It's up on the website. Is at the same place, the same location? I thought, I think it is. is. It? Okay. Unless TIC moved. Yeah, I've been there before. Okay, let's talk about that for the future. That could be, that could be a viable option. And, um, and. I'm guessing you have already you'll have vetted those dates, so you know that they're not up against other major conferences, or that uh, half of the construction industry just went to play golf in Florida or whatever. Uh, well, right? Uh, we are up against TDA a little bit. I think TDA is like that Tuesday through Thursday, so we'll miss a couple of people. Okay. Um, all right. Well, thank you, though. Good ideas. I'm all about streamlining and um, and also figuring out how we get the message out to wider audiences. So, um, yeah, let's talk about it and I'll bring Leah up to speed or up to with that idea on next time we talk to. All right. Thank you very much.
I don't see any other hands. So uh, Kathleen, would you give us an update on consultant cough, please? Yes, um, so consultant cough review. Um, again, as I noted, this is the first year Wistat is um, taking on uh, the, the cough review for consultants. This has been happening in the construction industry for, you know, prior to this, um, this is our last piece of compliance. So many of you um, might have been uh, contacted already either by a region representative or a bureau representative. Um, and it's basically just focusing on four aspects of, uh, you know, of your business, of whether or not the consultant is providing a commercially useful function to um, the project. So it's focusing on, uh, uh, your perf uh, the consultant's performance, whether you're managing your, um, you know, the, the project on your own, do you have a project manager, are you managing your own employees, um, do you own your own equipment, um, that type of thing, and um, also on the supervision aspect of your of your employees and supervising, you know, the certain components of the pro of the project itself. Um, basically, this is a last check and balance um, that is part of the federal requirement that um, all DOTs need to fulfill. So this uh, this time around with WISDOT, uh, we focused on the projects, uh, open projects from 2021. And, um, you know, again, this is just meant to be that final, excuse me, check and balance that would happen uh, with, the, with WISDOT staff reaching out. We have um, for, uh, in completing this for fiscal year 2022, um, the deadline is October 31st. We have a little bit more than half of the reviews done. So, you know, we're in that final push um, this week to hopefully get the other half done. And I, I, I know that um, I've seen some trickle in even this morning. Um, so I'm very hopeful that we'll, uh, you know, have them all done by October 31st. Um, <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> so, uh, but thank you everybody who, um, if you have been contacted, if, uh, you know, kind of for that prompt turnaround and in future years, um, I can say that we, I've learned a lot with this process, um, moving forward. It's been a, a huge learning curve for me and Madalena, but mostly me because <laughs> I've been trying to manage this. Um, but hopefully we, you know, in future years, the process, um, you know, with all the things that we learned and all the feedback that we received will be a lot smoother. So I want to thank everybody who's um, gone through this process for the first time and um, just know that this will be a, an ongoing process in future years as well. Thanks Metal. very much, Kathleen. Lots of effort gone into that. Um, and I see Dave came on camera. Did you want to add something there, Dave, or do you have a question? No, I'm getting ready for the next spot on the agenda. Just get to see oh. it. It's <laughs> nice to see your face. Uh, yeah. yeah, so as Kathleen uh, has mentioned delicately, this this was a really challenging process. Um, so thank you, Kathleen, for still being on the team yeah. and um, getting through it. We've had to, since 2019, when we got the feedback from FHWA on all of our areas of opportunity for alignment with the regulation, this was our final opportunity um, and now we are in a place where I can say with confidence, we've addressed all of those concerns. We're in a pretty steady maintenance phase and now really focusing on um, all the things that we can do to optimize the program because we um, don't have a questionable situation um, in any of the ways. And Jada's on here and so she can definitely uh, say that yes we're in a good place so thanks everybody because it's been a lot of work and creating new processes like kathleen said um this is one of the processes that having never existed needing to be created from scratch so you know we started with the focus group here in in transcac and um took that out to the point where now it's in implementation so uh yeah we could say it um politely or positively that it's um it's a labor of love that we all are doing here together and have made strides so that thank you kathleen yes. i don't see any hands so we're at everybody's favorite time where we do industry check-in and then i come around to everyone to ask if you have something to add so this gives you a little time while other people are talking um if you want to add something when i get to you you have the opportunity 
So Dave, please share ACEC uh, updates with us. Sure, thanks, Madalena. Uh, first, just as a good summary on the uh, prime meeting that we had, ACEC was happy to participate. And I think we had a really good turnout with primes. And I thought there was a really good sharing of ideas and different ways that we can increase participation. So I think there's, and you had a good list there. And I think we'll continue to expand on that and uh, find ways to get better at what we do. So thank you for that. Um, you mentioned opportunities are in the minutes. Our next transportation quarterly meeting is already this next Monday, the 31st coming up. And always, if there's a, a newer TV firm or uh, somebody that doesn't know a lot, we're more than happy to give a few minutes to introduce your, yourself at that meeting. And uh, we wanna encourage networking also at those meetings. So uh, okay. feel free to reach out to me and um, I can help with that as well. What's the name of that meeting again, David? It's the ACEC Transportation Quarterly Meeting. Uh, it's typically the consultants in the morning and then uh, staff from the uh, department is there in the afternoon. And so there's interaction back and forth. Yes, and it's Halloween. So I hope somebody is bringing <laughs> treats um, and I'll be there. So uh, I'm going to follow the recommendation from this group and then um, Michael has me on the calendar. So I'll touch base on when I need to be there, but I will be there. Right. And I might wear something Halloween themed just just to prepare you. Um, thank you for those updates and thanks again for participating. Um, we really it's a really important um, initiative and we can only um, move things forward with DB inclusion with um, the support of primes and their um, input and, and ACEC being um, our partner and that is really critical. So thank you. Um, and we're not, you know, it's not, that wasn't it. Like we had the conversation and now that's all the ideas. Like we're <laughs> I exactly. still keep generating ideas. We can still keep um, trying to implement. We can, um, we still want to brainstorm on um, the importance is to like, just keep that momentum going, you know? So that's the plan. And I do want to mention also that Kim Lobdell has been really helpful uh, in organizing these things. Um, she's, you know, in and out now of meetings as she works on being healthy. But, um, you know, we really appreciate everything that she does to support us. So um, okay. I'll just mention that. Uh, NAMAC, does NAMAC have, you know what? Bruce Spann was here. He said he had to leave at 1130. Is Bruce still here though? I don't see him. Uh, is anyone else from NAMAC on the call? I'm not thinking so. I'm looking through, but I don't see anybody. Um, Okay, well, what I can say for NAMAC briefly is that they just did have their business to business event, which is their annual uh, conference networking uh, opportunity. And I was there and members of our team were there. Uh, Benji and uh, Natalia were there. We did some networking. We did have a table. Um, the secretary made some comments. It was a it was a good opportunity to meet um, more people. I would say in the uh, vertical construction area, but um, certainly there were uh, there was there was some representation of um, horizontal uh, construction. What I noticed was that as the contractors were speaking, uh, there was a panel on um, you know just sort of how how do those contractors meet their needs right now, looking at the terrain and the variables that they face in vertical construction. Uh, they had started listing off a couple of the DBEs that are that work on our projects, um, our road projects. And I was feeling a little bit territorial, like, no, that those guys are ours, right? And then came to me that maybe what a better way to be thinking about that is um, not these are ours and those are yours, but how do we help these firms to expand so that they can encompass both or others even beyond those projects, right? So that it isn't that strictly you must be vertical or you must be horizontal, but you now can develop um, the ability to do both if that's what you choose. So um, that's going to be my... Finding sort of thought and approach uh, and um, sort of 
working in that vein. So I don't know if that's what NAMAC would have shared with you, but that's what I'm sharing on their behalf. Uh, FHWA Jada, what would you like to share with us? You are Sorry, on Madam. mute. That's okay. Sorry, I had to step away for a minute. Okay, are you have to now or you had to? No, I had to. Oh, okay. I'm what would you now. like to share with us? No problem. Can you repeat what what you were discussing beforehand? Sorry. It's just our industry issue check in now. So anything you'd want to share from FHWA, it's your turn. Um, concerning this right now, um, there are really no updates on our end. I know me and you, Madalena and Mary, will have to speak on um, something, but I would rather that be kind of discussed with you first. Okay. If that's um, so, okay. Sure. Um, so what I would like to share then, um, related to federal highways, um, is that we did complete our review of 49 CFR Part 26. Uh, that was also um, a, a, a heavy lift. And well, we did work with transit on that, um, got a bit of feedback from aeronautics, and uh, were able to submit our response to the um, changes that are uh, being suggested by USDOT for uh, for the changes to that overall regulation. So we don't have a timeline now of when what that review process is or when potential implementation would go into effect, but um, we did put our response together and uh, submitted it before the deadline. So uh, hopefully it goes into consideration. Uh, so that's one update there. Um, Randy, did you want to share something I see on the screen? Sure. Uh, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate the thoroughness of WSDOT dealing with these with DBE issues. I do a tremendous amount of work in the vertical side, and nobody does it better than what you guys do. And I just want to say thanks. It's important. Oh, thanks so much, Randy. We appreciate that. And um, it's it's just been great to build these relationships along the way and really feel that support. So thank you. Happy you're on that team. Uh, in DB office, anybody else on the team want to share something that uh, we haven't shared already? Rosalind. I know I shared this already, but I really encourage everyone to nominate a DB firm, an agency, or person that you believe is deserving of a golden shovel. And even if that person doesn't win, we still want to recognize all of our nominees. So please think of someone you would like to nominate. Uh, we do give them a, a little nomination ribbon that goes on their name bag. And so, you know, we want them to all feel special on that day. So please and uh, nominate a, a, a business, a agency, organization, or person that you really feel deserving of a, a golden shovel. Thanks, Roz. That is important. And, um, you know, we want to make sure that we don't always hear of the great things that are happening. So uh, we, we want to get that recognition out there and um, in particularly be looking at the consultant side too, which maybe is not getting as much attention as they should. So, um, you know, so hear that call. And I'm going to run down the list. I see that Scott Lauer had to go. Um, so, um, so we will not go to Scott, but Christina Crane will come to you. Do you have any questions or comments? She's not no, muted, but I'm, I'm not good. hearing her. Pardon? I'm good. Okay. Elia, any questions, comments? Yes, thank you, Madalena. Um, I just wanted to briefly introduce myself and our firm. My name is Elia Ayas. I work for a small DB consultant in Minneapolis and uh, recently gone through the process with Madalena and the masterwork stuff to get our CFR approved. That was really fun. Uh, we're, we're, we're close. I don't think we're quite there yet, but uh, wanted to also share that we uh, were selected for a job in the Northwest region. So we're really excited to work with WISDOT. It's our first job with you guys. So um, right. for those for those who don't know, we have about 30 employees and most of them are focused on inspection and testing, and we also do a lot of um, contract management, document management, project controls, and environmental services. So 
Uh, I'll be in touch with Brian at some point to, to talk a little bit more and introduce ourselves some more, but went through the construction fair process and it was great. So thanks for having us. Oh, great. Thanks. I'm sorry. I didn't give you the opportunity to introduce yourself. I think I must have confused it with trans act, but oh, no problem. Thank no problem. you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Um, that's important that everybody knows who you are. And I'm so excited. You got, you got a job. So yeah, right we are too. Really excited. Great. Wonderful. Okay. Thanks for being here. You got it. Um, Jesse friend. What would you like to share? Uh, nothing in particular. Just thank you for for having me. These uh, uh, discussions are always really really helpful. So just just glad to be uh, glad to be able to listen in. Great, thanks for being here, Benji. Anything for us? Nope, nothing right now. Thank you, <clears throat> Keisha. It's your turn. Keisha's muted. Okay, Mike Rivera, anything to share? Nothing at this time, just um, I'd like to see the progress. Uh, I think, like you mentioned, that it did take a lot of work. You you start at a certain point and you progress onward. And I like, I like what I'm saying. Thank you. Great, thanks for those comments. Neenal, anything you'd like to add? Um, I don't know if this was done or not because I stepped away for a quick minute while you were talking. Um, but it would be wonderful for if a DBE firm submits or for any firm that submits an NOI through the process um, for projects, if we could somehow get a debrief or even comments back through Masterworks. I mean, as the reviewer from the DOT is reviewing it, they could say, oh my gosh, you know, the reason why we wouldn't pick this team or the reason why we ranked you lower was because something whatever the reason is just feedback like that would really really help us like fine tune our submittals especially for small firms that are trying to compete against the larger firms that have an army helping them get these done whereas we're you know um do what you can roll up your sleeves everybody's in so just just a quick little comment like that okay thanks for that feedback i'll ask brian porter to make a note of that i'm not sure what the mechanics are on the end of the yeah. masterworks and how feedback happens there but um if he makes a note that could be something we talk about also in our upcoming conversation and look into the feasibility of doing that so thank yeah. you yeah even like a ranking that's not public but like we know like say for example and square would know well we rank 10th out of 40 farms or next time we're second out of 10. So at least we know we're making progress. We're, you know, we may not know who else ranked where, but just our ranking. Okay. I am making a note for discussion. Thank you. Thank you. That would be awesome. Um, cool. That's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Mino. Kathleen, anything else you want to add? Um, no, I have nothing further. Okay. Thank you. Mitch, we haven't heard from you today. Are you are you still with us? What's going I'm on? I'm still here. Great. Brian did such a great job. I didn't have to interrupt, so <laughs> nothing <laughs> else new for me. Okay. Well, thank you for um, for being with us um, while there was no chief, um, and for doing all the data work you do because you are the behind the scenes guy putting a lot of things together. So. Thank you. And um, anytime you want to make a comment, please do, because you do have some of that knowledge that I don't have. And so happy to have that added. And Brian, Brian Porter, anything else you'd like to add? Uh, nothing more to add, but I did note the comment from Manal, and um, I appreciate you summarizing some of the feedback we got from the DBE Prime event and look forward to talking more on that. Great, thank you. Thanks for your participation there too. Randy Crump, anything to share? Nope, I'm good. Okay, thanks Randy. Uh, Roz shared and um, Shondalyn, you made it through the whole meeting. <laughs> How are you doing over there? Anything you'd like to add? Actually, Shondalyn stepped away. My name is Elijah. Elijah, Reeves. hello. And so, yeah, uh, I've taken in a lot of information. 
uh, listening to you guys, and uh, I look forward to uh, getting more information as we move forward. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, and I'll make sure my team also sends uh, more information to you all about other stakeholder meetings that I'll cover um, construction more so, and we have a DB stakeholder advisory group that meets for the Southeast region, um, so that's another opportunity to hear more and, and share more feedback. So thanks Absolutely. for Thank engaging. You. Thanks. All right, Natalia Vega, we're going to come down to you. Have you been saving up all your comments? Hmm. Nothing Anything to else? add. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. Well, uh, I think that we made it through another TransCAC quarterly meeting. Thank you all for your feedback input. And um, we Rosalind. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, oh, sorry. I thought it was a residual. So, okay. Um, just, just want to know if you if the schedule is out for um 2023 meetings. Yes, I believe Kathleen did already send that. Yes, I did. Roz, we're, uh, I'll double check the invite, but I sent those out last week. Okay, I'll Perfect. check my email. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Happy fall. Have a great Thanksgiving when we get there and we'll be in touch.